other than the, what we're going to be doing today. But all the emphasis should be on safety on deck, which means obviously wearing a life jacket with a built in harness, using a tether, staying low below the lifeline, crouching, staying connected, um, staying in the cockpit if you can, which is relatively safe, and get out of dangerous areas. Go fore and aft on the weather side, don't go fore and aft on the lure side. You know, there, there are a dozen of these things, and we, we, a lot of them we just do anyway. But it's really important that we coach each other to do stuff that's safe. You know, it's very difficult if you are knocked unconscious or even hit hard without being knocked unconscious, it's really difficult to survive it. Because the first thing you do when you go in the water is a gas reflex. A gas reflex is this automatic response that your body has of being immersed in cold water. And the first thing you do is you go, <gasps> and you can't control it. Navy SEALs can't control it. You just can't control it. Colder water is worse. When you get around 70 degrees, you don't have it anymore, or 65 degrees. But in the waters we have here, the gas reflex is what kills you. Because you aspirate water, and then you, <coughs> you come to the surface, you've got salt water in your nose and in your throat, and your life jacket doesn't inflate because you've got a manual inflating life jacket, and then you can't find the ripcord, and you drown. And you drown in, you know, 60 seconds. So the initial response when anybody goes to the water is to cry man overboard. And you, you, you used to think that this sort of people panic. It's a lot better to have people panic and alert than it is to have this be a secret. So somebody goes to the water, everybody says man overboard who witnesses it. Don't, it's not like the skipper's job. In the, and if you have flotation, it's a great idea to throw it as soon as possible. And that can just be, be something like this, which is portable, you throw it in the water, it inflates. It can be a cushion, it could be an extra life jacket, it could be a life sling. But the idea is you throw it, you get it on the top of the person as quickly as possible. Not so much that they'll be able to swim to it, because it's really difficult to swim, and so it marks the spot on the water, so that if you go off into the fog and come back, there's more stuff in the water so that you can find the victim. And if the victim doesn't have a life jacket, you can swim to it, so much better. Next thing is you want the people to, you want the boat to stay as close as possible to the victim, because if you lose sight of the victim, the chances of finding them are greatly reduced. So you want to stay in the vicinity, and this means that you need to have practice maneuvers that work upwind and downwind, so that you can spin around and stay within a couple of boat lengths. If you can't stay within a couple of boat lengths, it's key that you mark the spot on the GPS. So yell down, man, overboard, the person down below ought to know how, what button to press and pull to mark that spot on the water. You want to do that as soon as possible because you want that spot to be as close to the victim as possible. But the victim's going to drift with the current and the, and the GPS position is going to be a ground position. So when you return to your GPS position, let's say that you get tied up and it gets messed up and you put the sail for three minutes downwind and finally you get it down, you come back and you get back to the GPS position. The victim's not downwind so that's a place to start your search, but it isn't where the victim is. So how are we going to pull them out? The halyard? So we need where the halyard and the life sling. So let's pop the life sling out of the bag and, and drag it over here. And once the victim's got it, it connects the victim to the boat so that you've got a handle. And the third thing is that it can be used to haul the victim up out of the water. So the way we're going to do this, if you have a cruising boat that only has a couple of halyards, we'll probably use the main halyard. But on a boat that has multiple halyards, we can use any halyard. It doesn't matter if it's forward on the boat or not. So if this is long enough to reach basically the waterline of the boat, then we'll use a halyard like this. Right? And it's, pre it's pretty long.
It's amazingly simple, and this way you don't have to deal with ladders. Guys can't use ladders when they're in cold water. Their hands get too uh, hypothermic too quickly, so they can absolutely be pulled out with the legs. You want to practice a couple of different maneuvers. First thing we're going to do is we're going to heave to, just to, so everybody knows how to do it. Heaving to is a great way to just prove that the boat can sort of be pinned in a single location and you can catch your breath and so forth. We're sailing upwind like this. Victim goes in the water. So, traditional. Uh, Figure eight, we bear off, sail away from the victim, and come back on a reciprocal course. One other thing, when you come back on a reciprocal course and it's a beam reach, you're going too fast, but you can't stop. Them. So you never approach somebody on a beam reach because you'll just blow right past them. You can't slow the boat down. So on the return, you would always dip down and try to approach the victim on a close reach so you can accelerate and accelerate the boat. The new version of a figure eight, man overboard, you tack immediately and bear off. And by tacking immediately, you sort of start shortening down the distance as you sail away. And it also slows the boat down because you're going up into the wind. So you sail off for a little ways, come back, come up to the victim. We call it the figure eight and the modified figure eight. Here's one more method. Let's say you're beating and the person falls over you fall off to a broad reach. Sail down, sail away from the victim. When the boat's under control, tack and come back. But when you tack and come back, you come back in a reciprocal course, and you're downwind of the victim, which is perfect. You want to approach from downwind, and you want to approach with boat speed control. If you're running, man overboard, you go to a beam reach. A broad reach, sail away, come back. If you're reaching, you fall off to a deep reach, come back. From any point of sail, you go to a deep beam, a, a, a broad reach. And the reason you do that is it guarantees you'll go below the victim relative to the wind. When you turn around, you'll be sailing back in a controlled fashion. Okay, the final one is the quick stop, circling. So, man overboard, we're going to take the boat up into the wind, which does two things. Slows down the boat and it starts minimizing the distance down the way from the victim. Open the top of the lifeline bag, toss the lifeline out, and we'll feel the high. We tack, but when we tack, we leave the jib on the wrong side. When we leave the jib on the wrong side, it blows the bow through the eye of the wind. We'll circle down around with the sail still strapped in, do a really gentle jive, and come around from the leeward side. It's a, just a circling maneuver, but you don't tend the sail. The key lesson here is that it's relatively easy to keep yourself from going overboard and it's really difficult to 